This video lecture introduces hypothesis formation strategies using density as an example. Support for the development of this lesson has been provided by the National Science Foundation through the Ohio University Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom program. If we took these three cans of pop and placed them in a large container of water, what do you think will happen? Will the pop float or sink, considering that the cans are unopened and full of pop? Take a few minutes to discuss your ideas. Were your predictions correct? We noticed the Diet Coke floats while the regular Coke sinks. What about the Coke Zero? We'll consider this question later in the lesson. Why do you suppose one can of pop sinks and the other floats? In general, what determines whether an object will sink or float? Is it based on weight? What about size? Is there something else that determines whether an object will float or sink? An object's ability to float or sink is determined by its density. What is density? Density is an intensive property, which means it stays the same regardless of the amount of material we have. For example, the density of one drop of water is the same as the density of 100 gallons of water. It will always be one gram per cubic centimeter. Density is intensive because it describes a material's compactness, or how much stuff is packed into a given space. Let's look at these two blocks of equal volume. If the blue circles represent how much stuff is contained in each block, which block has a higher density? The block on the right is more compact. It has more stuff in the same space, so it has a higher density than the block on the left. Knowing this, how do you think we would write the formula for density? What properties define an object's density? We noticed that density depends on how much stuff, or mass, is contained in a given space, or volume, so density must depend on mass and volume. We write density equals mass over volume, or m over v. This relationship is easy to remember if we know the units, or if we remember that density doesn't break my heart, it cuts it. The top half of the heart forms an m, and the bottom half forms the v. To learn more about density and its applications, continue to the float or sink density lesson. Let's think about the statements we just made about the pop cans. You predicted that the pop would either float or sink. Was your prediction a hypothesis? Is there a difference between a prediction and a hypothesis? The answer is yes, there is a difference. A prediction is a guess regarding the outcome of an event, what you think will happen. On the other hand, a hypothesis is an explanation of an observation. Why did something happen? A hypothesis must be a statement that can be tested. After all, we want to know if we've come up with the correct answer to the question, why did it happen? Now the question becomes, when do you make a prediction and when do you form a hypothesis? Predictions and hypotheses are connected in a continuous cycle. First, we make an observation. Based on this observation, we form a hypothesis. Before we test our hypothesis, we make a prediction about the outcome of the experiment based on our hypothesis. When we test our hypothesis, we make an observation again, and the cycle continues. Let's consider an example. I have made the observation that the tree that grows next to the water line always blooms first in the spring. Based on this observation, I'm going to form a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that the water line keeps the tree roots warm, causing it to bloom early. Now I'm going to make a prediction that if the water line is moved away, the tree will bloom on time. When we form a hypothesis, we want to make a good hypothesis. Let's go through some examples to see what makes a hypothesis good. First, we have two good examples of a bad hypothesis. 
Michelin tires are better than Goodyear, and Febreze smells better than Glade. What's wrong with these hypotheses? What makes them bad? Remember that our hypothesis should be a testable explanation. Can we test either of these statements? No, we can't test if Febreze smells better than Glade, or if Michelin is better than Goodyear. Do either of these statements provide an explanation of an observation? No, these statements don't answer the question, why? Why are Michelin tires better than Goodyear? Why does Febreze smell better than Glade? If the statement is not testable and does not provide an explanation, then it's not a good hypothesis. Let's look now at a better example. We have now written that Michelin tires last longer than Goodyear, and Febreze is preferred by more people than Glade. Are these statements testable? Do they provide an explanation? We can test which tires last longer, and how many people prefer the smell of Febreze over Glade. But we still haven't answered the question, why? Why do Michelin tires last longer? Why do more people prefer Febreze? Now let's look at the best example of a good hypothesis. We have made the observation that an orange floats in water. Based on our observation, we will form the following hypothesis. If the orange peeling is removed, then the peeled orange will sink in water. Is this statement a testable explanation? Yes, we can easily peel the orange and place it in the water to test what will happen. We have also provided an explanation for why the orange floats. We think that the peeling must be the reason why the orange floats. Notice that this hypothesis also contains our prediction, what we think will happen when we put the peeled orange in water. When forming a good hypothesis, try to use the if-then form. You can start out by using this template and filling in the blanks. If I do this, then this will happen. Let's go back to our float or sink pop demonstration and complete this experiment. To complete the activity, you will need five different kinds of pop, including a diet version of one pop. Record the name of the pop and measure the mass of each can. Next, calculate the density for each can of pop, assuming that the volume is 384 milliliters. Then, Look at the nutrition facts on each can and record the mass of sugar. Finally, place each can in a container of water and observe which cans sink and which ones float. After you complete these steps, you should have a table similar to the one shown below with all your data for each can of pop. Pause the video and complete the experiment before moving on with the lesson. Based on the observations you just made during the experiment, try to make a hypothesis. Let's start with the observation that diet pop floats while regular pop sinks. Take a minute and try to write down a good hypothesis that explains this observation. Compare your hypothesis with a partner. Did you come up with a hypothesis similar to this? If adding sugar increases the density of the pop, then pop with less sugar will float. We can also make another hypothesis. If adding sugar causes the pop to sink, then there should be an amount of sugar that can be added that will cause the pop's density to be equal to that of water. Let's use our experimental data to make the second hypothesis more specific. Enter your data into an Excel spreadsheet and plot density on the y-axis versus grams of sugar on the x-axis. We put density on the y-axis and grams of sugar on the x-axis because the density is dependent on the amount of sugar. Add a linear trend line to the plot to obtain an equation for the line. Let's go through the steps we need to follow in Excel to create the plot. After you enter your data, go to the Insert tab, then go to Charts and click the drop-down menu for Scatter Plots. Choose the scatter plot without lines, and a graph will show up on the screen. 
Right-click on the plot and choose the Select Data option. When the Select Data Source window appears, click on Add. A new window will appear that allows you to edit the data series. Highlight your X and Y data, then click OK. To add the trend line, right-click on the plot data points and select Add Trend Line. Choose the Linear Trend Line option, which should already be selected by default, and check the box to show the equation. Now use the plot and trend line equation to complete the following hypothesis. If a can of pop with blank grams of sugar is equal to the density of water, then a can of pop with more than blank grams of sugar will sink. Remember that the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. Now let's add one last twist to our float or sink experiment. Check how many grams of sugar are in a can of Pepsi next, and predict whether it will sink or float in water. Place the pop in a container of water and observe what happens. Based on your observation, write a hypothesis using the if-then form and set up an experiment to test your hypothesis.